Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the 2015 North American Challenger Series Qualifiers. My name is Reed Rapid Melton. We'll be hopping into a best of three series game one between Team Liquid Academy. You'll see them on the left hand or on the right hand side of your screen in the red. Be Zig in the top lane, Bebe as their jungler. Of course, uh, Bebe, I believe, uh, formerly known as uh, 9JX, I want to say. Anui, their mid laner, is formerly known as Cat God. Of course, X Wind in the 80 carry role, subbing in for their uh, now LCS famous 80 carry uh, little guy named Keith McBrief. Uh, he's actually unable to play in these matches, I think, due to his spending his time uh, subbing in for the main Team Liquid roster, and so X-Wind will be subbing in for them uh, today. Not a team, not a uh, player that I've ever heard of before. I actually asked their coach for a little bit of info, and he was like, uh, yeah, he's just a you know, very strong solo queue player that they added to the team here to sub in for Keith, who is respectively subbing in for the main Team Liquid roster. And of course, Mojo in the bottom lane, uh, a guy that hasn't necessarily showed up on the roster. Uh, his, his name, Mojo, is actually uh, kind of interesting because his name in game is Liquid Jojo, so Mojo Jojo, a nice reference out there as well. And they'll be playing off against OO. It's magic, you know. It's actually Team Infinity or Infinity Esports, formerly known as Monstar Kittens. They finished on the ranked five challenger, ranked fives ladder, rank 17, and are playing up against Thomas and the Schlotskins, formerly known as Team Lol Pro course a division of curse who then became team liquid and of course this now being their challenger team finished on the ranked fives ladder at fourth place of course playing against uh, monstar kittens rank 17 now known as infinity esports now uh infinity with nice zero zero because it kind of looks like a sideways infinity symbol if you look at it right a little bit interesting there. Let's go ahead and go over the lineups, or at least the roster for them. Saskio in the top lane, not a whole lot of remarkable things to say about this guy other than just being a solid top laner. Favors tanks, and of course that's kind of what he's playing here. And he's playing Anar versus Zig's top lane Jarvan. Now one of the things that you guys will probably remember about Zig is that uh, if you've seen him in the competitive scene early on, it was because he used to be the AD carry for a little team named Team Dynamic, or Monomaniac Esports, the team that Nintendo went in early on. Oh man, Inui taking a lot of damage there in the mid lane. Of course, keep in mind Inui is Cat God, if you've uh, seen him play, formerly of Enemy Esports, of course, uh, now here playing on Team Liquid Academy. Um, like I said, uh, Cat God, very strong as both a top laner and a mid laner. And uh, speaking of changing up ro roles, Zig played a lot of uh, AD carry early on in his competitive career and then moved, of course, to the top lane. Might have remember seeing him play on RMU Esports. Now here is a top laner for Team Liquid Academy versus Saskio. In the jungle, it's JJ, and he'll be playing up against Bebe. JJ Bebe matchup going to be interesting <laughs> to watch. Uh, Bebe going for a level 3 gank, but waiting in the bottom lane brush, not a space you'd expect him to be in, but at the same time, something has been communicated in to him as being unwarded, and Hospark hasn't skilled up his... Oh man, this is going to be a lot of damage. There's the flash! The engage! Going to be forcing an immediate flash there out of Hoodspark, but Hoodspark, rather. Executioner Ken going to back off as well. Now, Hoodspark, a guy that you probably know as... Uh, at least I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Check a couple of notes that I had uh, made out here just to make sure. But uh, Hoodspark, a guy that you may know otherwise as Viagra Pancakes. A uh, very popular Draven player way back in the day. Uh, but changed his name to Hoodspark, and that's who he is. Playing with Executioner Ken. Now, Executioner Ken has most of his competitive experience, uh, most recently from playing in Collegiate Esports. So, if you've seen him play, that's probably where you've seen him uh, out there. But uh, competitively, he is playing here on Infinity. And Infinity, a little bit of a pickup team. The original Monstar Kittens roster, who's now known as Infinity Esports. Uh, a team that's gone undergone a lot of changes recently, and oh, Zig going in on a Saskio, getting that Martial Cadence uh, for extra auto attack damage. So that's what you should see Zig do: just consistently engage, get that one auto attack off, burst, get the burst damage down, then back off. Wait the 10 seconds for the passive to cool down, and then go back in for some more magic damage. And to be fair, a lot of uh, Jarvan's early damage comes from that Martial Cadence. Oh, Cat God's gonna take the Q, lands its charm there. Will JJ go back in? No, but it gets the Q to turn around from that 
Orb of Deception, kind of deceiving JJ, going a little bit too far into turret tank, like two or three turret shots, and with the ignite, Anui is going to pick up the first kill of the game for Team Liquid Academy. And honestly, Team Liquid Academy, the favorites in this matchup, not just because of seeding, but also because Team Liquid actually did a great job at recruiting new players. And one of the strongest things that you can say about Team Liquid as an organization as a whole, at least the, the Curse Esports facet of it, is that the manager overall, um, uh, Liquid, Liquid's manager, Liquid, 112, uh, does a better job at choosing players for his team rosters than almost any other manager I have ever seen. He formed a Curse Academy roster that was strong enough to make it into LCS. Did the same thing with LOL Pro, one of the strongest challenger team rosters as well. Of course, LOL Pro kind of transitioning into uh, this Team Liquid Academy roster. New faces, but still the LOL Pro spot being used here. At least uh, as far as challenger ranked fives are concerned and uh keep in mind uh, also a roster that included keith mcbreathe an ad carry that went straight into lcs and did an incredible job uh during his time there we'll see if x, x wind can live up to the hype here uh, i gotta say not extremely excited whoa zig uh not a trade he should have made he tanked up an entire creep wave so probably not what he was necessarily looking forward to uh to do but uh Considering this Lee Sin positioning might be getting a little bit of extra help up towards the top lane. We'll see where JJ wants to go. He's uh, he killed off the scuttle crab, so he's going to use that as sort of a base of operations to speed up his way towards the top in the mid lane. But actually going to neither, still looking for an opening in either one of those. Now, Bebe had a very aggressive start to the game with that early flash gank down in the bottom half of the map, but unfortunately couldn't convert off of it. Lost his flash and. Along with it, lost a lot of his early pressures, so he's been just going back into the jungle, trying to farm things up, and a uh, nice little insta-pause here. Will not be something we have to worry about. Pause and instantly resume. So, what I was talking about, uh, Bebe, a lot of aggression early on, but didn't really capitalize on it too much, so has been just a straight trip back to farm things out, and of course, by most effective, as soon as she hits level 6, so you can't expect to see her just farm things up until then. Whoa, the all-in off of the level 7 hit here by Anui. Picked up that early first blood, and since then really uh, putting the pressure on. Mini-Me is still level 5 with no ultimate necessarily per se. Just now hits level 6, and of course uses that off the distortion. Now, Anar up against the wall. Sonic Wave missed there by JJ. Still putting this pressure on. Zig, maybe a little bit of a weak spot there for Team Liquid Academy, but with their... They are opposing jungler top lane. Bebe is just going to go for the sure things. Dial down the jungle at the dragon pit and pick the first dragon of the game up at 8 minutes. But Infinity will look to trade that back with a turret of their own top lane. Unable to pick up the kill on the Zig, but will take his turret in response. So a good dragon for turret exchange. And actually, I like the turret takedown early on a little bit better than an early dragon. Because early dragon will give you a 6% attack damage and ability power boost. Which isn't all that much early on because you don't have very high AD or AP to boost percentage wise. Whereas the early uh, turret gold and the uh, you know early objective lead actually can make a much, much bigger difference. Now, Executioner Cannon, Hoofspark, Mojo Jojo is going to face check right into it. Exhaust there on Hoofspark, but with x Win walking right into a wall, he is probably dead off of one Glitter Lance, one auto attack, but one shield there from Mojo. Getting him out of that situation alive, and even though Mojo almost dies himself, good escape, Team Liquid. Don't give up any kills in that situation, but a great bait. 8 out of 8 there by Executioner Cannon Hibbaspart. Clearing out their lane, and, uh, well, should be able to take this turret with Minimi rotating towards the back line. Got a lot of wave clear here from a Mimic Distortion if he wants to go underneath the turret and clear out that wave. He's thinking about it, and there he goes. Clears it out, and like I said, looking to take this turret, actually. Executioner Ken was thinking about going back, but they need the extra damage on the turret. Looking to even up the turret score at 1 to, uh, 1 to, uh, actually, no, uh, looking to go ahead in the turret score, 2-0. I was like, wait a second, they took the first one. How can they even it by taking another one? Math, of course, not the strong point. You'll learn that as I try to add up gold over the course of the game. This is why when I look for a co-caster... First question is always, are you good at math <laughs> so that we can make up for things? So middle turret's going to go down. Uh, so now we can talk about trying to even up the score as Anui 
aka Cat God, won his lane matchup early on as a CS lead, kill lead, and just about every lead you could look for. And you'll notice by those somewhat questionable items pick it up, he is looking for an early Deathfire Grasp. And that is because we're on patch 4.21, so DFG still in the game. Executioner can be forced to ult himself. Bebe going in and going down. Even up that score, but look at Saskio coming in. Gonna pick up one kill, two kills off of a Nar Crunch combo right into the wall. Perfect positioning. It's like I'm making that mwah, so the, the, the motion with your hands that you see French people make when they've just made like this famous French cuisine. It is just exquisite. Every time I watch a Nar into Crunch combo, it's just like ah. Uh, the thing of beauty and uh, beautiful enough for infinity to take down not only a uh, couple kills but a turret as well now they're ahead three to one in turrets and actually looking to move forward towards a second tier turret kill they got five on two power play five on three as baby comes back from base Overstaying their welcome, maybe just a little bit, but Infinity off to a very dangerous start here. TP down to the bottom lane just to keep x Win from being able to get too much of a comeback off of a turret kill of his own. Keeps that turret alive, picks up the gold and, CS, gold and experience off of all that CS, and honestly, Liquid losing what turned it. It wasn't even really a team fight, it was something that kind of came out of nowhere. Great positioning with Saskio roaming down, and as soon as he got there, he's like, wait a second, let me just kill everyone. Kind of a no-brainer there, winning that team fight for Infinity, and a great job capitalizing off of those kills with an early objective takedown. Now, that's all three outer turrets taken down by Infinity, so already up to, whoa, x win in a lot of trouble. Saskio's got this 1v1, gonna bounce on in there. If he had gotten the reset, x, x was just dead. He's gonna take this last auto. No, he did not have a tech. Saskio canceled his auto and wasn't able to pick up the kill. Now, Zig with the counter kill oh my gosh i went with the double face palm reaction to that i know you guys, I know you guys can't see it but uh, the struggle of being an infinity uh, of being saskio in that situation knowing you had the kill in your grasp you let it slip something something spaghetti so jj lands a q there onto zig but probably not gonna go in off of that now uh I think just kind of reeling from that infinity or just like, well, we lost our top lane. We didn't pick up a kill. And that could be a real big morale blow, a really big morale blow early on to say, look, we had it. We we're kind of firing all cylinders. And like I said, Team Liquid Academy, definitely the higher seeds coming into this matchup. So excited to see what they can accomplish here versus infinity, who honestly, I didn't expect a whole lot from. Now, Hoofspark, I've cast him before. Whoa, Executioner can't take half of his health off of one combo there by Anui. I didn't expect a lot from, uh, you know, Saskio and maybe JJ in the jungle, a little bit lesser known, up against two very, very strong laners in the form of uh, Bebe, formerly known as 9JX, and, and uh, Zig. But at least at this point in time, you can say uh, a couple of good things for uh, for Infinity in that it's not necessarily just their solo laners showing up, it's the team play that's really allowed them to get the better rotational... Or, Better rotationals. Better rotations early on. 3-1 to one in turrets. And honestly, just looking better as a team. Specifically Saskio. His roam down there for that Gnar Crunch combo. I, I, just, like, I still have that like replaying the highlight reel in my brain. It's just like, ugh, it's so good. Wake up in the morning, get the cup of coffee, watch Gnar, you know, five-man Gnar ults all day. It's a, it's a good way to start the morning. Mini-Me, their mid laner, I feel like I didn't introduce this guy when I was uh, first talking about Infinity. I, it's a guy, it's kind of like the next up-and-coming mid laner. I saw a lot of uh, a lot of pro players talk about him very, very favorably. I was watching uh, like Meteos' stream. He's like, who's this Mini-Me guy? He wins all of his games. He's doing really well. And LeBlanc, one of his main champions. Good situation for him to be on, and you'll notice that he actually could have specced into a Deathfire Grasp, but instead went for a Morella Nomicon and is now going into a DFG. It actually might be putting that into a Zhonya's Hourglass. Uh, Morella's Zhonya is a little bit more of a common build that I've seen, uh, instead of just going for that all-in DFG. Like you can see Anui, rest in peace DFG, TYDFG, whatever you want to say about it, it's built. Therefore, his Ari got his first kill and put that early gold into an item that should help get this snowball rolling. We'll see if he can get in for any good kills. Now, Dragon being started here by Infinity, but Team Liquid 
Definitely in the area. We're gonna see Bebe get in, try for the steal, but he's gonna get blown up almost immediately. And knew he needs to go in there, gets the DFG on. Asasco is gonna die before he can bounce into the middle of the enemy team. JJ with a nice kick backwards, trying to get Infinity out of here alive. They were able to pick up that dragon, but we'll see if they can get out without losing too many members of their team. Executioner can kind of take one for the team. He'll go down as well as Saskio. Two for one exchange, but a dragon picked up for Infinity. Overall, a very, very good trade in their favor, and they'll grab, I believe that is their first dragon of the game, so worth it in that respect. Uh, 15 minutes in, they grab their first dragon. Tie it up one to one as far as that objective is concerned, but come out overall very far ahead as far as early objectives are concerned. Three dragons and a baron versus or three dragons, three turrets and a dragon. Got to get my objective names right here. Uh, versus just one turret and a dragon. Good way to start the day. Now, interesting to see this uh, Jarvan build here from Zig. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly what Jarvans are used to building nowadays. Can go for an early Brutalizer, but by and large, you're just looking for the early wave clear. You one-shot the wave, you look for roam opportunities. And so that's what you can see uh, did earlier. Killed off the minion wave top lane, roamed down for things like Dragon, things like, you know, clearing out the jungle camps, kind of st stealing those away from Bebe, who took a little bit of a change from the top lane from the jungle role and became a top laner for a little bit of time. But like I said, uh, Tiamat completed for Zig's top lane Jarvan. And together with Inui, should be able to put together some pretty devastating dives onto the back line to kill off Hoofspark, even if a few of the abilities do get spell shielded. Minimi continue to land that chain. Oh, it does latch there for the second sig Sigil of Malice uh, proc. So that's uh, below half HP for Inui before this fight even starts. And Infinity pushing up this mid lane once again. They tried earlier on, but we're actually really overextending. We'll see if they can put together something here as a... Uh, now JJ kind of marauding with those uh, sonic waves off to the side. Not really looking to dive and really zig there to make sure that they don't go for that one. Dives versus a Jarvan tend to go relatively badly because he kind of gets stuck under turret, which is the sixth man in the in the five on five, which is what it, we're seeing shape up here. Team Liquid going to go into turtle mode as they don't want to lose any more of these turrets. And Infinity, while they... Did very well early on, looking for the early rotations for turret kills. They haven't managed to find to put to put together too many avenues to take down, you know, turrets number four, which oftentimes is the most difficult. The second tier turrets require a lot of early mobility. Speaking of which, we got on the hunt, pushing up this mid lane, just gonna shove down the minion wave coming up with them. You need to bring some minions along with them, but just trying to say, all right, we hit the go button. We're gonna speed up the mid lane and try to get here. They do have Meganar. If they want to go for this dive, uh, immediately one-shotting the minion wave, though. Hoofspark is going to keep the minions out of the picture, but can they keep minions of their own there? Not able to do that. A little bit of a wasted ultimate. Uh, they're for infinity. Like I said, they have better wave clear overall, but they just can't crack the turret. I mean, Zig and Bebe just lock them down underneath there. They die. It's kind of a no-brainer. So really at this point in the game, when you have the, the outer wave of turrets down, what you need to do is make cuts through the enemy jungle, establish deep ward coverage, and that way you can see where uh, Team Liquid Academy are going to be rotating, and then catch them out of position to take down those second tier turrets. Either that or you fight them and win the fight. You can also go for forcing fights at objectives, and then taking turrets off the back of that. And to be fair, that is what has been working out better for Infinity, and with a big minion wave being pushed down bottom lane, Looks like that is exactly what they're looking to do. I'm putting down some nice early damage here. They've got uh, you know, maybe a short range 80 carry. And oh man, Zig actually taking a lot of damage off of that. Down to about half HP. But like I said, the big uh, weakness is that there's no... There are very few deep wards for Infinity. So they aren't aware of exactly where Team Liquid Academy are going to be. Which allows them to just sit in a lane and keep CSing, you know, keep wave clearing, keep their turrets alive, dive in there onto Saskio, is gonna blow him up! He didn't even get his ultimate off! Of course, he wasn't in Meganar form, so that makes it a little bit more unlikely that you're gonna be able to use your ultimate. But keep in mind, in the meantime, Team Lincoln Acad Academy, they're winning the fights at their turret, and they're allowing Bebe, or not Bebe, but uh, x win to keep still pushing top lane. He's kind of a one-man show here, he's taking down the outer turret top lane, is actually looking for a turret takedown on the inner one as well. He's just going to keep hitting this and actually might be able to take it down. Now he's uh, 
We have a minion wave along with him, and he's probably dead here. We'll take the turret. If he suicides for this one, it's still completely worthwhile. JJ having to be a little bit more careful here. Executioner Ken maybe in a little bit of a weak spot there as well. Mini Me is going to come in to seal it. Seal the deal. Saskio actually steals it at the end, but you get the idea. One for two exchange. One and a, one champion there for Team Liquid for two turrets being taken down, and all of a sudden we're back to even, almost even in the scoreboard. Three to three in turrets, six to five in kills, but a two thousand gold lead, twenty five hundred gold lead, almost three k there for Team Liquid as they are uh, coming up ahead in several different categories. CS being a main factor in there. You look at the top lane, you're gonna see where that's coming from. An eighty CS advantage. About to be crested here. Zig taking down a turret as well, and that'll be four. Turrets for Team Liquid Academy just in time for Dragon. Now, Zig's actually going to take a trip back to base, and he can afford to do this because he does have Teleport available. Oh, TLA! Almost had a great thing going for them there. The wrong bush being clairvoyance there by that scrying orb. So Spark was like, all right, nothing in the area. Almost face checked into his untimely demise. But even still, Infinity will uh, lose the first dragon and then come up with the next two. Need to burst the dragon down. It's still very low. TP is going to be completed. There's Zig going to get in with that ton of damage onto the Hoofspark. Forcing him out of the fight. But there's Zig. Or there's uh, assistance from Bebe. Pick up the kill off the bat, on the back, in the back, on the Hoofspark. Big knockups and CC combos there for Saskio. But he's just not going to stay alive long enough. Now JJ, the next member in danger here for Infinity. But they turn it around on to Mini-Me. Gonna be Mega Me as he does combo with JJ for a kill there, but everybody from Infinity just gonna die here. Executioner Ken, lucky to be alive himself. Gonna be the sole survivor there. A 1 for 4 exchange in Team Liquid Academy's favor. X Wind instrumental in taking down the second tier turret top lane. We'll look for his second tier bottom lane turret kill as well, and he'll take that down at the 21 minute mark. Only one turret outside the base remains for Infinity after doing such a good early. Okay, there's a pink word there. You're not fooling everyone. Anyone executioner can gonna take it out. Uh, Team Liquid Academy went down very heavily early in early objectives. Would have been able to fight their way back off of a very strong split push game by X Wind. They were able to uh, take down two turrets top lane for free, and ever since then, it's kind of looked like Infinity haven't necessarily had an infinite amount of answers to everything that Team Liquid Academy have been uh, been throwing at them. And honestly, the strengths are exactly where you'd expect to see them. Cat God has been a god there, All, not quite godlike just yet, but uh, of course Inui figuring out some. Um, Innovative strategies to not only pick up first blood to come up, come back with three more kills and an assist on top of that. You know how difficult it is to come up with puns for your name when it's Inui. Like, good sweet lord, you have to pick a name and it's Inui. I don't know if somebody needs to take that guy to naming class. I mean, Cat God is a hard act to follow up as far as names are concerned, but. We'll get used to it sooner or later. Blue buff kind of taking the scenic trip around and knew he should be able to pick this one up. Yes, barely going his way. He'll grab that double double buff for himself and uh, scouting cue there. Don't want to take that one in. Team Liquid on the siege here looking to take down, like we said earlier, the last remaining outer turret here. 23 minutes in and all turrets outside the base are gone for Infinity. They have to put their minds in defense mode after having been on the aggressive for the majority of the game. Also, do want to point out a minor uh, correction. Uh, I think I stated earlier that Bebe was uh, a guy named 9JX. That's actually not him. 9JX, the uh, jungler, now renaming to Hard as jungler for Cloud9. Uh, G2A, their challenger team. So I'm not sure why I got that mixed up, but you just want to set the record straight there. Bebe, uh, of course, a very <laughs> very different player. Although I say he's a very different player, but he actually has a relatively similar champion pool to uh, to 9JX or Hard. Uh, so not actually all that different, but you just want to get the names right and uh, set the record straight. 
So Inui, kind of the star of the show so far for TLA, but do you have to give an honorable mention to the rest of his team? Uh, Zig specifically, the top lane Jarvan, you traditionally play that into matchups that are very sustain heavy, so that you don't fight the sustain battle, you just all in them over and over again and just win because they don't have time to sustain things. But up against a tank matchup, actually something that's kind of difficult for Jarvan if you can't kill people off of all inning. So it's good to see that Zig, while he wasn't able to snowball super hard in lane, was able to put on at least enough pressure to win his lane in CS. And you can see that very, very effective 70 CS lead out of lane phase. Uh, I'll take that any time of the week. So full armor stacking afterwards. Early thorn mail just now having been completed. Only Minimi really going to pose a threat to him, but when you're primarily going to be diving the LeBlanc, probably shouldn't have to worry about taking too much damage in response. It is indeed Azania's Hourglass completed for Minimi's uh, LeBlanc, so not actually the um, uh, not actually the DFG looking for some defenses. I don't blame him. The extra the extra armor is going to both keep him safe from Ziggs all in keep him alive a little bit longer, and allow him a second spell rotation. So even if he goes in and gets taken down low, he'll actually- Oh, mini me next year! Can't get a burst down a Nui! The chain's gonna latch! Isn't it good enough? The Ignite's taking him down, but he's got so many shields keeping him alive just barely off to the back. He dodges that sonic wave. JJ gonna get ulted back into the enemy team, and, and Nui somehow, against almost all odds, gonna go down. There's Ace in the hole! Not enough! The dunk down on the hoof spark! Finally able to take him back with Glitter Lances and a lot of move speed. The rest of Infinity gonna stay safe. And Nui somehow stays alive. Uh, and a 2 for 0 exchange off the back of that means a Baron attempt here for Team Liquid Academy. They don't have to worry about it being smote away. Minimi's here if he wants to look to pick off somebody. Saskio does have, or Minimi not actually there. He's still alive, but he's back in base. Saskio, Executioner Ken here. Un Unfortunately, I don't see too much steel potential. TLA are dropping down kind of low, and Saskio's gonna have Meganar in, gonna flash into the pit, get a nice double Nar up here, but he's just gonna die in the face of five champions, and there is Baron number one. Picked up 26 minutes here for Team Liquid Academy. X Window pick up a double kill off the back of that. Now 4 1 and 6, and TLA starting to look like they're in in game closing percentage right now baron buff specifically picked up bottom with a huge wave pushing in and really only objectives in their way uh tla went a base insanely strong they've got three carry items on x wind at this point in time last whisper just now completed which means yeah there's nothing that's gonna stop nothing that's gonna stand in his way Dragon number two going to be picked up here. TLA's finally taking that down. And honestly, it's uh, it's always nice to see who takes dragons. It's a nice way of seeing exactly which direction the game is shifting. Whereas dragon number one went to Team Liquid Academy. Both subsequent dragons were taken by Infinity. So you can see Infinity with a big mid-game surge. They were able to... Whoa, Mojo, don't face check there. Mojo, don't go, go into the base. And now kill is being turned right back around. Saskio, it'll be unfortunately the second... Kill, Executioner Ken can't get out of the Cataclysm. He'll be taken down. Infinity might have found one kill for themselves, but at what cost? It's going to be TLA taking most likely down their first inhibitor of the game here at 28 minutes. And this might actually just be the end of the game with so much wave clear, wave pushing in. Baron buff and powered minions coming in as well, and turrets under fire. It's only going to be up to Hoofspark and JJ to keep these base turrets alive, while Zig might die to tanking up the turrets in the engage here. It's Hoofspark who's actually going to be the one to fall as Team Liquid Academy push in for, to what could actually be the end of this game. Now TLA might want to, you know, do the safe thing and back out of here, but look at these crits coming. It had an X win. It's actually going to flash in looking for a few more of them. Putting out more damage than he knows what to do with. And Team Liquid, if they can find a solid pick here, might actually be able to finish off this game. They just need another wave, but you can see the calls being made reflected in the pings. GTF out of the base. x win going to get kicked all the way back in. He's going to get shut down there by Saskio. And just leave the base. That's all you have to do. At Mini Me looking for a chain to last. Misses it. I knew he's been on a diet. He's extra resistant there to skill shots landing. TLA just desperately trying to find their way outside the base. They'll take a blue buff with him, but we'll leave x win behind in the dust. Going back to base the hard way after a nice insect there by JJ. Kicking him back into the enemy team.
Recalls for alls, and now coming out of base with a death fire grasp, a death cap, a whole lot of death, but no void staff. A little bit, uh, just shy of being able to pick up that three item combo, but uh, speaking of three item combos, X Wind already completed his three items. Now look for another BF sword in the inventory. This is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. The itemization here, TLA, a little bit ahead of schedule, but we are at the 30 minute mark. And after a game that's been going back and forth for the first at least 20. Oh, Saskio, look at the first damage, but that's what happens to your tank, even with a NAR against the wall. It's a Nui. Gotta give an Infinity back a little bit of their own medicine. Last time it was Infinity that one shot Mojo Jojo. But this time Team Liquid doing the same thing to Saskia. Well, arguably a much more difficult target to blow up. Kind of the situation. Mid lane being pushed in by Super Minions and a Super 80 carry X win. Baby and Mojo got the bottom lane on lock with Anui helping push that one in. And Zig all the way up top lane, he's got his teleport available, so more than happy to keep that lane, to get that lane pushing with uh, some split push of his own, the push focused towards the bottom lane, Team Liquid Academy. Looking to push in, now they are, uh, whoa, JJ looking to get the engage, we'll get a nice knock up, admitting me with the immediate exhaust. He's in, the entirety of his damage is completely negated. Now with a big engage from Bebe. It's all X-Wind all the time. Putting out that damage from the back. A big dive through the next, uh, through the base turrets. On to the Nexus turrets with Super Minions pushing in. This should be the end of the game with Team Liquid. 31 minutes in. Closing things out. The Flash is in. Going to be taking Mini-Me down here with a Nui. Going legendary at 8 0 Performance from his Ari. The Nexus falls. It's Team Liquid Academy taking out Infinity.